All right, hello everybody. We're looking at our new version 2.0 uh, accessory house global hybrid Apple and Samsung Android cables. We're going to compare the first version to the new version. And I'm going to compare the 3.5 millimeter uh, cables. So we have our first version, which has a flat cable. Our connector there. The remote is right here. It's a little bit smaller. And the cable here is actually glued in rather than being ultrasonically heat welded, which is what our new cable has. It has a clip on there, not necessary, but it's there. And this was 160 uh, centimeters long. Now, this is the first cable I ever purchased to sell. Um, and when I bought it, I kind of didn't know tons and tons about cables compared compared to what I know now. Um, so it was an all right cable, but at the end of the day, cables themselves are the one of the hardest things to actually make. There's just too many things that can go wrong with them. The connector can break, the soldering inside of the remote, or the connector can break inside of here. That's why they have these little rubber tips to try and stop it from breaking when, you, uh, when it bends. The actual cable wire can get cut. Or, you know, the actual remote can fall apart too, depending on how it's made. There's just a huge list of things that can go wrong with a cable. But obviously it's the most important part to a set of headphones that uses a cable, because it's what provides the music. So you want to have a good one. So looking at our new version, we've upgraded it to have much stronger and a little bit more flexible rubber tips or rubber ends so that when if it does bend it doesn't break as easy as before. It is also a 2.8 millimeter round cable which is much thicker than the flat cable we had which was a 2 millimeter flat cable. And the actual remote itself is significantly better. It's a little bit bigger. The buttons are a little bit more pronounced and it's ultrasonically heat welded to close this so that it doesn't fall apart basically and down here where the cable actually connects inside of this plastic housing there's a big piece of rubber on the end of that cable that's it's, it's one piece so the cable doesn't pull out if you if you were to pull it out you'd literally have to rip it in half and the rubber piece would still stay inside um, and we also put instead of having the straight connector that goes into the device we have a very strong L connector. That's going to relieve a lot of tension on uh, if you get hooked on something. Uh, in general, this is just a much stronger uh, connector. All right. Next thing we're going to look at is physical compatibility. There's basically two things that are going to make these cables compatible with your headphones, and the first one is going to be physical com compatibility. So when I say physical compatibility, I mean molded tips, uh, certain size connectors. Um, the best example here of a very large molded tip is the Bose QC2-15 cable connector. This massive piece of plastic is molded around the actual connector and it goes into a specific sized hole like that. And obviously a regular connector like that or like our 3.5 millimeter just straight cable is not gonna suffice. So if make sure you know what headphones you have, make sure you know if it needs a molded connector such as this uh, before you buy any of these cables. Now looking at the second part of physical uh, compatibility, you're gonna be looking at ring technology. And these are the rings on the actual connector tips. The important ones are the ones that go into the headphone. So depending on the headphone you have, how old it is, etc. Some of them weren't actually made or even came with a, connect, a, a connector that has three rings on it. They usually have two. On a, two, on, a th on a two ring connector, you're going to have a ground and a left and a right channel. And then when you add in the third ring, that's what's giving you the microphone um, ability. So on this cable here, depending on how it's been made for the headphone, it's going to be 
ground possibly, microphone possibly, and then left and then right connector or vice versa. If you have a headphone that came with a two ring connector and it didn't have a remote on it, there is a chance that these cables won't work at all and you'll just hear distortion. Because when you put this connector into the port, these rings make the gold line up appropriately inside of the port. And if they don't have the right rings and it doesn't line up appropriately, most of the time it just doesn't work. You'll hear echoes and have no sound out of one ear and sound out of the other, or it'll just sound like white noise. Now it's important to note that that's not always the case. Um, if you're if you have a three uh, three ring connector and or you've purchased a three ring connector and the headphones came with a two ring connector, there is a chance that the three ring will still work. A perfect example of this is a Bose OE2 headphone. Uh, it came with a microphone on it and only had a two ring connector and uh, when we use the three ring connector this one here it works fine however that is not the case all the time most of the time if you don't have the two or the three they don't work with the vice versa now looking at a bluetooth headphone obviously a bluetooth headphone you're usually going to use the bluetooth capabilities and listen to wireless sound um, but if you run out of battery there's usually an option on those bluetooth headphones to use a cable because the Bluetooth headphone is designed to have wireless sound, a lot of the time they don't include a remote on a cable that's included with the headphones. And that usually means that it probably doesn't uh, adapt to the three ring connector. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, but it's really difficult to tell and it's impossible for me to test every one of them. Now looking at the actual uh, version two hybrid cables that we have, or that have been made, this here, is our OE2 or our Bose OE2 Quiet Comfort 25 Sound True on ear, Sound True around ear, and Sound True around ear 2 headphone cable. It does not fit into a Bose around ear 2 headphone. That has a weird molded tip similar to the QC2, except that the mold is up here instead of being down here, it's up there. It won't, it won't fit into that properly. This is our QC3, Bose QC3 headphone cable. This is the actual mold of the QC3 cable. It is designed for QC3 only. It's important to know that the QC3 and the On-Ear 1 came out at the same time in 2006. However, they use different connectors. A lot of people confuse these because they look similar and also because they have the same ear pads. So a lot of times you'll see people selling QC3 slash OE ear pads. That's because the ear pads are exactly the same on those headphones, but the cable is not. So if you have QC3 headphones, this is the cable. It will not work with Bose on-ear one headphones. This is our QC2 and 15 headphone cable. This is the mold for it. It's specific to that, those two models of headphone only. It won't fit QC25, it definitely won't fit QC35 because that's Bluetooth. It's only, f or QC1, it's only for QC2 and QC15. And our last one, this is kind of the wild card in the bunch as it's the 3.5 millimeter headphone cable. Straight cable. Now I designed this cable specifically to fit into Sony MDR1A headphones. Don't know if it, it'll probably fit into MDR1A BT, but that's Bluetooth and I don't know if it'll work. Uh, it won't fit into the DAC because they have completely different connectors on it. So this one here is, a, is the wild card because it fits in loads of headphones. It fits in Solo HD, Solo 2, uh, Beats Studio 2.0, and it works with all three of those versions of headphones. I have not tested Beats Studio, the original version, so I don't know. Um, it fits into Bang & Olufsen H2 and uh, H6 and works fine. Um, Audio-Technica MSR7 works fine. So as you can see, it doesn't just cover one specific type of headphone because it's a universal connector. Uh, you, if, you're, if you have a headphone that you want to ask about, 
send me a message and I might know because obviously when I made this video six months down the road I could have found out some new stuff. I will usually update all the listings to match what I definitely do know is compatible. So you might, if you see it in a listing as compatible, it's compatible. If I haven't mentioned it, I either haven't tested it or it's not compatible. Now, Apple setting. You're looking at the remote. On the back of the remote, there's a switch here that you change to up or down position. If it's in the up position, which is towards the logo and the microphone, that is the Apple position. And if it's in the down position, that is actually the Samsung Android position. Now, we've not, this, this will work with any Apple product and it's fully functional. It'll have all of the um, commands that any uh, pair of the white earbuds have, etc. Um, the one exception that we don't know yet is the uh, iPhone 7 that literally came out a couple days ago or a week ago. Um, the iPhone 7 has a lightning uh, port. It doesn't have a uh, regular 3.5 millimeter port and obviously the way you use your headphones with the Apple or with the iPhone is you plug it into the um, lightning cable and then it goes into the phone. So I'm unsure if the messages from the remote will go down into the lightning cable and still get transferred into the device, the, the phone. Um, so this would go for anything that comes out post the any phone or uh, iPad or iPod that comes out around the same time as the iPhone 7 or in the future. Um, if it has a if it has a lightning uh, cable, um, I'm unsure at the moment if it actually is compatible. It could be. It could not be. Looking at the Samsung side, this is where it gets a little bit shadier. Now, the reason why we say that it's Samsung specific is because um, it uses Android and. Android is made by Google and basically Google sells Android to different uh, phone manufacturers and once the phone manufacturer gets that software they can do as they please with it to program it to their hardware. Once they program it to their hardware that will tell their um, earphones that they supply with the phones and the other devices how it will re react to or with the actual device. So for example if you buy a Samsung phone, an S6, it comes with a pair of earbuds and you try out your those earbuds on an HTC phone, you'll probably notice that the volume no longer works. Instead, it controls the song skipping forward and backwards. That is something that will happen. Um, there are certain types of ring technology that Samsung uses, and there's certain types that Huawei uses, and that Sony uses, and that HTC uses. And the reason why they don't use the same is because they want people to buy their stuff. So if you could just go out and buy any cable and it'll work with any phone that has Android, well, that's going to obviously hurt those businesses. So they make sure that their ring technology isn't fully compatible a lot of the time. Now, there are some companies that use the same ring technology as um, Samsung, such as uh, LG and OnePlus, and there's some others as well. Um, they use the same ones, so the functions are the same. Um, now, also looking at the Samsung functionality, if you have an S6 phone or newer, the triple click to skip one song backwards is function is a function. It will work. Any S5 phone or tablet, etc., that's older than that it will not have that function. And that's because Samsung never programmed it to their phone to be one of the functions. It's not a fault in the cable, it's just it never worked. 